That's the proof of the pudding. Actually, that fractal behavior of nature, according to this theory, emerged directly from the structure of the vacuum. The vacuum directs reality. And reality portrays the structure of the vacuum. So when you look at nature, you can see the vacuum geometry. And in such a theory, everything is included, including you. So then it is a fully unified theory. We're going to finish on this. We're going to just touch on it as we go. This is a presentation I did to the APS, the largest physics community on Earth. And I showed here in a scaling law, hello, uh, I showed in a scaling law that if you take all of the objects in the universe and you plot their radius against their frequency, okay, these objects all fall on a straight line across the graph, okay? All of these objects obeying the Carl Schwarzschild condition of a black hole. Okay? Let me explain this, what it means. Because it looks complex, but it's not that complex. This is the universal scale, our universe. We have an approximate idea of its radius if it's a closed universe. If you look at that, the mass inside the universe exceeds the escape velocity of light. That means if you shine a light in one direction, you know how Einstein discovered that the electromagnetic field can get bent by the gravitational forces, the curvature of space-time? That light will bend around one star, bend around the other star, bend around the other star, bend around the other star, and come right back. It will not escape our universe because there's too much mass in it. That means we live inside a black hole. That means we third that. We live inside a black hole. That's why when you look up in the sky at night, it's black. <laughs> because light is contracting in the vacuum towards singularity. Everything inside that black hole is smaller black holes. But these smaller black holes, you are outside of. This is a quasar, very, very large. This is a galactic center. This is our sun. This is an atom. And this is a subatomic particle, the Big Bang, 10 to the minus 33 the Planck's length. Note that the atom and subatomic particle are included Current physics is divided between quantum theory, which is subatomic particle and an atomic particle, and cosmology, which is relativistic equation for large objects. Here we show a direct relationship of all these objects together. No division. If all of these objects are considered different scales black holes. This is called a scaling law. This is what 
I'm just about to publish in November. It's under peer review right now, and so far the peer review is excellent. We're having fun yet. <laughs> so now you can see that if you're in a universe that's a black hole, the smaller black hole in that universe, you're on the outside of, so they look like white holes. They radiate. You see the radiating side of the event horizon. It looks like a star. It looks like a planet. It looks like an atom. It looks like a subatomic particle. Do you guys see that? The white hole and the black hole are not two different objects. They're inside each other. And it's a feed between the gravitational field and the electromagnetic field. Radiation generates curvature in space, which generates radiation, and that generates an open feedback. And what's an open feedback? It's a fractal. That's exactly what a fractal is. It is an, an equation that's reiter and reiter and reiter and it generates an open feedback. Everybody sees this? Everything you're looking at is different scale black hole, including all the atoms that you're made of. We don't see any evidence of entropy and death. All we see is evidence of mini black holes disorganizing and reorganizing, or actually changing levels of organization. When you die, not one of your atom will ever disappear. They just go from one level of organization to another. They go from one scale to another. Now I'm telling you that your atoms are many black holes. Is that crazy? Actually not. Some of the largest, most comprehensive unification theory that are trying to be worked out now and are incorrect because they're missing the fractal component. <laughs> uh, by Stephen Hawking, for instance, described all subatomic particles as mini black hole and the Hadron Collider that's being built in Geneva that I mentioned earlier is being built to search for these mini white hole black holes for subatomic particles. One thing that's really exciting that I discovered lately is that I'm telling you that the atoms that makes up your cells are mini black holes? Well, that's true. But another resolution is the cell itself. When you look at the surface of a cell, a biological cell, it has a grid on it. It has a mesh on it that holds the, the event horizon of the cell, that holds the, the membrane of the cell together. That is called lipo, lipoprotein. The rate of oscillation in Hertz of the lipoprotein on the surface of a cell is 10 to the 11 hertz. That's 10 with 11 zeros hertz. That's how fast it vibrates, the cell. If you plot the cell at 10 to the 11 hertz and plot the radius of that cell, then you end up in the exact middle of the graph and you have all of the biological resolution. 
right there in the middle of the graph. And I'm not publishing this with this first publication of this paper because it's a little too esoteric. <laughs> you don't want to freak them out all at once, you know? <laughs> it's, it's bad enough, you know, that uh, you're telling them everything is a black hole. <laughs> but the cell actually, the cell biology, the biological resolution actually obeys the Schwarzschild condition of a black hole because it generates so much energy. 10 to the 11 is a huge number. The other thing that confirms that this scaling law is correct is that when you look at the distances between 